The voice of Husker Nation is on the air. This is Hale Varsity Radio. Insight, opinion, expertise, along with the biggest names talking Nebraska sports. Join in with the show at 402-489-1240 or 1-800-825-5865. Now, here are your hosts, Chris Schmidt and Elijah Herbel. Welcome to it. Mondays here at Tail City. We're powered by Cornhead Lager, Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal, and Justice sitting in as well. Justice served by that Nebraska offense in the second half against Purdue. We'll dive into that. No flinch Monday is how we're going to title this thing. And uh, you're welcome to join 489-1240, 489-1240 to get in here on Hail Varsity Radio, 800-825. 5865, where you hear us across the Hale Varsity Radio Network. As always, find us on the stream. Like and subscribe to the Hale Varsity YouTube channel at Hale Varsity Radio, Twitter at H Varsity Radio. We'll check in. Tim Vergeese going to join us uh, from inside Nebraska Rivals.com in about 15 minutes. We'll spend some time with Coach Blackshirt himself, Mr. Uh, black shirt charlie mcbride a monday with charlie and then uh, also jay moore gonna join us as jay bird's loading up the golf clubs uh we'll get a chance to sit down with him get his thoughts our starting five shout outs appreciate many of you checking in on real red reaction following uh, the nebraska win over purdue and also the uh, average Joe pod we do on Sundays at 10.30, but plenty to discuss, plenty to look forward to with unbeaten and maybe kind of nearly ranked Rutgers coming to town. What say you about Saturday? Was it as bad as you thought after second look, or was it as good as you thought when we talk about that second half? Colton's going to get us kicked off. On the phone lines, Colton, thanks for calling. Go ahead. Hey, I thought um, we we showed up, finished the game for the first time. That was good to see. I didn't get to watch it, didn't have Peacock, listened on the radio, went old school with it. Um, my only question for you guys is, do we eliminate kicking and just go for it on fourth down going forward? Thanks, guys. Colton, appreciate it. That's a fair question. It's one we've toiled with quite a bit, Elijah. At what point do you... Well, theoretically, punt when it comes to kicking uh, in the kicking game. Uh, There's two sayings coaches have. Colton, appreciate the call, 489-1240. Open phone segment here to get started out. Can't do it or won't do it, right? Are you asking a player to do something he can't do, or are you asking a player to do something they won't do? So there are certain wide receivers that – are better at at downfield or edge blocking than others for Nebraska football. Uh, If I'm going to run any sort of edge or short game, I am putting Mr. Alex Bullock into the contest, period, Uh, because he is going to get after it. He's going to get a job done for you as a wide receiver. Uh, When it comes to kicking, you've got a couple of guys that are supposed to, their job is to snap it back to said holder. You have one kicker hurt. You have another kicker that's a developmental kicker. You're working through it. Good leg. Just got to hone in on it. You keep repping it, but when push comes to shove, let's talk about down and distance. right? If it's fourth and one, fourth and short, you just got to ask yourself, what's the history say? Rutgers is a team that loves to block kicks coming into this thing. Purdue did get one, and all of it hasn't been on hold, all right, because he's had some brutal snaps, some Ray Finkel moments. Be it the snap is a grounder back to the holder or the laces aren't turned properly. The whole process is a nightmare, and in week five, it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way in training camp, and it shouldn't be that way in spring football. But it, it is, and if I'm a kicker, I have one job or I get left off the bus – And if I can't go do my job or I don't feel good about my job, i.e. the process of snap, hold, kick, that's part of the mental thing too, let alone just fitting it between the pipes. So uh, the answer, Colton, is let me get back to you. Let me get back to you on game 
time, situation, score, momentum. Momentum's the key thing to capture in college football. Can you keep it? And can you keep it from switching sides, switching jerseys, and drowning you? Because there was all sorts. Momentum wanted a bus ticket out of West Lafayette because there was none for either team in the first half. The minute you'd get some, here'd come a flag. <laughs> that's very true. And that's like one of the, my takeaways here is you ask the question to lead off and Colton lets us dive directly in the deep end. So hat tip to you, Colton, because the kicking is the one area where I am just as concerned on Saturday than I, as I am today. Like, there's other issues. You look at the penalties. You go back and rewatch it. Yeah, those refs were pretty flag happy. That was how they were going to call the football game, and neither team, I think, was going to change how they were playing, and therefore flag happy mm-hmm. is going to happen. Uh, talk about Nebraska's red zone efficiency. Looks a hell of a lot different, though, if Nebraska is kicking field goals and they have points on the You're board. You're getting something. You're getting something. The, the momentum doesn't feel like it is just always being tossed back to Purdue after a great offensive drive. And credit to Nebraska's defense not letting Purdue – turn momentum in a rock, into a rock rolling downhill. They were getting stops. They were getting off the field. They were getting the ball back for their offense. But the game feels a lot different at halftime if Nebraska is able to knock home two of those field goals and that touchdown doesn't get called back due to a phantom offensive pass. You're up 13, ball. but you crossed the 40 six times. Six times. You could have put up a Notre Dame-type score. Could have, could have, could have. Uh, if you weren't getting flagged or things weren't going wrong or you were able to convert some kicks. Well, think about it. The game is, if the first half you convert those two field goals and that touchdown is get called back, which ended up being a missed field goal. And as you said, that's 13 points. 41 is the offensive output you would have put up, assuming you put up those same numbers in the second half, which is not necessarily a safe assumption with Nebraska this year. Whenever they get a good lead, they tend to, to take the foot off the gas pedal just a little bit. Not saying that's right or wrong. That's just been a reality this mm-hmm. year. But... If you're able to convert this, 41 offensive points feels a hell of a lot different than what that game ended up feeling like. And that's kind of where I'm at right now is Nebraska, it's fine margins. It's minutia that leads them to get there with a snap and a hold or um, a, a phantom flag. It's tiny little things, things that are at times controllable, at times uncontrollable. <laughs> but the game feels a lot different. Nebraska dominates that game from start to finish if they're just a little bit more cleaned up in the first half. You played a half of football and you won by 18 Mitch Sherman's story on The Athletic. We'll talk with Mitch tomorrow. It has been five years. The game at Maryland. Five years since Nebraska went on the road and won a road contest in the Big Ten by three scores. They're not playing that well, and they're still winning. They didn't play that well. They still rolled northern Iowa. All right, it came back to bite them against Illinois with the run defense. But Illinois showed themselves well against Penn State. So you don't feel as bad about your 4-1 your and one mark right now. Uh, and the way you look at it and, and the way Rule's looking at it is glass being half full. Hey, you found a way to do some things in the second half. You hadn't really done that all season long. You, you scored 28 points, 21 in the fourth quarter. Two offensive, one defensive. So that's good. What you do have is the right direction. This is a game they lose under previous coaching leadership. This is a game they botch or even maybe escape with their life. Instead, they they built a lead, blew them out, and, and thrived in a really tight situation. That's, that's my final takeaway after further review. And the good news is, yeah, this is one thing with a team that he sees correctly titled a growing football team. It's a team that can take this win and apply it. A tight tight ball game on the road. You're going to have another tight ball game on the road probably in about two weeks when you go to Indiana. You're going to have a tight ball game likely in Lincoln for at least two to three quarters against Rutgers. Uh, just based, and maybe you won't, but it's shaping up. Vegas says it's going to be a tight ball game. And then there's Ohio State. So we'll get to our shout outs, our starting five in a moment. But and we'll get to Ohio State when Ohio State week right. comes after, around. After further review, it's okay to, to move on from Saturday as a Nebraska fan and say, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. It yeah. wasn't good, but it wasn't that bad. There's some positives to build on, and, and maybe they'll put it all together Saturday because that's I think that's what you're wanting to see. 
Aren't you, as a Nebraska fan, can you go from kickoff to final gun, playing good defense, playing complementary offense with the defense, and at least not having to, to reach for the Jack Daniels come kick time? And Because upon further review, talk about kicks, like offense, I think, on Saturday gets a B. Mm-hmm. Defense gets a B plus. And it should be noted, you weren't playing a great offense or a great defense in they're, Purdue. They're bad. They're, they're bad. They're awful. They're bad. It's your special teams that made it scary. It was a, a D minus, if not an F, special teams performance. Bushini was good. Matt Roll talked about that today in his press conference. I think I said that uh, yesterday on our other show, The Average Joe Sports Show. Bushini had himself a great day from tackling, getting some holds <laughs> down, a couple good punts. Like He had a great day, but everyone else in special teams had themselves a bad day. And is that going to allow you to win football games in late October, November in the Big Ten? No, it's going to be a big issue. you got to get it cleaned up. But I think you can have a positive takeaway from the way, as you said, the offense was able to play complementary with the defense, the way the defense responded after a, a tough showing against Illinois. I think that's what it was. It wasn't perfect, but they responded, and they responded well. Defense gets a B plus. Offense gets a B. That's really good compared to where Nebraska has been over recent years. It's the special teams that held you back. And is that going to continue to rear its ugly head? Likely. Is that going to hold you back as a whole? Yes, but Nebraska is not a college football playoff team. We're not expecting Nebraska to be a college football playoff team. I think offensively and defensively, they're still good enough to be an eight-win football team. The special teams has a couple things to clean up, though. Let's get to the shout-outs. Coach Brandon is in first. Tim Jackson says, good afternoon, good afternoon, y'all. Uncle Larry is in. Uncle Larry lays out just the dedication of his family to Nebraska football. My 65-year-old sister, uh, heart valve repair Wednesday, and her husband sent me a pic of her watching the game Saturday with her Husker hat on. She uh, uh, should get uh, fan of the week. She should because that's dangerous. That is very dangerous, <laughs> Uncle the Larry. with a heart issue. Uh, for sure. But good, good hat tip to her, though. Yeah, uh, she's she's watching that game, paying to watch that game on Peacock. Uncle Larry, thanks for the in-depth run there on just how dedicated your wonderful sister is and best to her on Wednesday. NASCAR Eric checks in. Cliff in Florida says, what's up? Hey, guys. Beansy says, what's up? I made it early for once. Do you know the Beansy, Beansy that played... Uh, the reference to uh, to Sopranos, the Sopranos. Hmm? I watched a a compilation actually last week of every single murder in uh, in the Sopranos, but okay. no, Beansy is not okay. Familiar well, Beansy probably. got run over by uh, uh, what oh was by it? was it by Tony in the car? No, that was that was uh, that was Uncle Jackie. I think oh, okay. I think it was Uncle Jackie. I got to get my. Guy's right. He was in Shawshank. Anywho, Beansy, good to have you. Red Knight 79 says, hello. Mr. Snitley is in. Jeff Snitley, part of the Boulder Peace Treaty. Other Dave is here. Grateful Red says, yay, Monday. I don't know if that's thick with sarcasm, Grateful Red, but I feel you. Justin is here. Jeff is in. Mud Flaps uh, says, I had high hopes this year, but getting to seven wins isn't going to be easy. That's kind of my takeaway, too. After Illinois and after the Purdue experiment, you know, seven or eight will be a good thing. They'll earn those. And the schedule isn't turning out to be uh, dessert by any means. And I said that earlier. I want to make sure I clarify and make myself clear. I'm not saying Nebraska should get to eight, but they have the ability, they have the pieces to get to eight. They still need to make improvements mm-hmm. as the year goes on, particularly well, on special teams. Those but pieces need to get glued. I, I think the path to eight is still there. It, it might be. Anonymous says, if they don't beat Rutgers this week, does anyone like their chances of beating Wisconsin to get to six? Wisconsin will need that game for bowl eligibility as well. Wisconsin was a nightmare in the second half. You saw a good football by Wisconsin to go up 21-10 at half. Zero points. You saw four and five star versus two and three star uh, is what you saw in the second half. And, and USC just kind of did their thing. Eat beef is correct. Mondays are gross. Eat beef. Thanks for checking in. Tiger Shark Diver is in as well. And um, yeah, Rutgers is number 98 in rushing defense. So we need to, in all caps, run the ball. We'll see. We'll dive in. We'll hear from Matt Rule. In a little bit on on that running back rotation, I think we all saw what we saw with Emmett Johnson and his ability 
to uh, to get some yards, get some great yards on first down. Gregory checks in. I, I think they have it backwards with the running back situation. Start Emmett, then bring Dowdell in in the second half, fourth quarter. Dowdell's the hammer, and no one will want to try and take him late in the ball game. We'll see. I you know I'm not a football coach, but it it does seem that they run better on and run better on first down. Uh, when it comes to the Emmett Johnson experience. Uh, Brian checks in, says, Good afternoon. This Mazuka thing is quite interesting. Saturday rule says he'll talk about it on Monday. To de- today, yeah, he was suspended end of last week, but now he's back, WTF. Hey, uh, I think there's a whole long list of things that Mr. Mazuka needs to do to, to see play in time, and that public... Shout out by rule of he's a backup player for us is was really loud to me. Well, I I think we laid it out pretty well on Friday whenever we discussed this Mm -hmm. topic of you like you like his game from a talent point of view. He's all Big Ten, Mm -hmm. like that's what he is from a talent point of view. But it's not all about whenever you're fitting in a a team culture, Mm -hmm. what you can do between the white lines. Well, I hear from Tim Verghese. Want to hear from you? Uh, Matt Rule also on the way. It's Hale Varsity. We're powered by Cornhead Lager. And now, and now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. Back with you, it's Hale Varsity. We're powered by Cornhead Lager. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal. Justice is driving the boat, or we'll say the uh, the four door Lincoln sedan. Well, Sopranos love, since it is Rutgers week now. Tim Verghese with us. We say hi to Tim with Rivals and Inside Nebraska. Tim, how are we doing at Tim Verghese on Twitter is where you follow him. What's a good word? Good weekend? Yeah, good weekend. Uh, not too bad. Um, you know, you mentioned the uh, the uh, Sopranos reference. I don't know if you've all been watching The Penguin, but I've been watching The Penguin. Finally caught up earlier today. Tell me about The Penguin. It's it's just Tony Soprano if if he was in the Gotham universe if he if he was if he was going up against Batman it's it's, it's, ah. it's, it's cool all right yeah. I'll, I'll have to check that out I, I caught the first episode it's it's a little bit weird because it isn't a Batman story it's like an organized crime story sure well Gotham is the mother of all yeah organized. fictitious crime scenes mm-hmm. right I mean the and, organized and now crime. canonically Gotham is in New Jersey which <laughs> I'll take it. Hey, that's Rutgers themed, right? Mm, it is. Yeah. Well, if we're going to stay with the the, the gambling slash uh, you know uh, gangster theme, I mean, a, a guy that's getting close to being a made man is John Bullock, a linebacker, right? I mean, the guy's playing all Big Ten level. I mean, just just go ahead and and uh, and and give him the the old pin prick to the pinky and burn a saint in his hand and. Just uh, annoyed him because man, that dude's playing some special football at middle linebacker. Oh yeah, he's been he's been lights out, and it's been fun to watch. I think um, you know I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, but uh, I really think you know we've we've talked a lot about the the recruiting impact of it and and um, what what Dvorak's done, but I really think like I I think it's having an impression just like seeing the development that he's gone gone through, and and again for him personally like just the work that he's put in to get to this point, like it, it sets a really good foundation for future linebackers at this program. It sets a really impressive, a really high standard for Christian Jones and Vincent Shavers and all these guys that are coming up and, and, and set to like replace him here in the coming years. Yeah, and I, I didn't have on my bingo card for Saturday, John Bullock pick six. Kind of look like a running back. Yeah, <laughs> look, good vision out there, you know? Right. Well, can, can he tote can, the rock on first can, down? Can he go, can he go Travis Hunter? <laughs> <laughs> Carries. What'd you think? What'd you think? And we, we kind of started off the show after further review. Was it as bad as you thought? Was it okay? Some Saturday takeaways, Tim. We'll start there, and we're we're going with the the no flinch Monday theme. And that was a that was a good second half. That was kind of a gut check second half because past Nebraska teams would have found a way to lose that thing. Yeah, like, and and that's my thing with the past two weeks as well. Even the Illinois game, like, um, you know. Past the rest teams, you know, they they lost that game obviously, but that game is way out of hand. Like they break earlier in that game than they did. Um, and this week, um, you know, you felt at halftime it's like, hey, this game Nebraska should be up multiple scores. They just weren't able to finish. Um, I thought the defense played well throughout, and then yeah, that second half, it's like the offense finally got things together. Things started rolling a little bit on both sides of the ball. I think the biggest takeaway for me coming out of the weekend is. 
the defense finding their identity again, finding their pride a little bit again. And offensively, I really think the offensive line started to find a little rhythm. Like, you know, I think people are a, a, a point I think people aren't really talking about. This was the second or the first true game for this this starting five. Mm-hmm. Um, second overall game for these guys. It takes a while for a group to find rhythm. And I really think they started to do that down the stretch um, on on Saturday. And I think that's going to be impactful moving forward just because I think they have an idea of who their guy is. I think it's Emmett. And, uh, you know, I, I think I think it's just like the the holes aren't there for Dante. And, and I think Emma is just running the football better right now. But then that line up front, I think they're really starting to feel it as well. So you're the person I and I love it, Tim. I wish it was me, but you, you're the smarter man than I saying everyone talks about the running backs in the second half. But you're looking and circling that offensive line as being the, the difference maker in terms of Nebraska's efficiency on the ground. Yeah, and I, it goes hand in hand a little bit. You know, maybe maybe the the performance the past two weeks doesn't look as bad if it's Emmett instead of Dante out there on the majority of snaps just because Dante is real good in pass block and he's real good hammering it, but the vision is still a work in progress where, like, Emmett's able to get skinny in the hole, make guys miss, and, and, and does have a little vision to him to create something out of nothing. Um, you like that with him. And, and so maybe it's a combination of both those things, but I really did think, like, looking down the stretch of just the, the tempo they were running with, um, they, they, they started to play a little clean as well. I think that group is starting to come together. Like we've talked about coming into the year, um, when talking about Colorado and the offensive line struggles they had early in the year, early last year, because it's tough to bring a group in fresh and have them gel. And Nebraska, again, this is a second game for a group that I, I think is talented, but just needs some time to like gel together. Because you even think about in practice, they're practicing in units. They're not practicing, okay, Mike is down, Henry's up. Turner's down, Gunner's up. They don't practice those five together. So this is the second overall time we've seen this group together. Tim Verghese with us from inside NebraskaRivals.com at Tim Verghese on Twitter. We look at the offense and we look at some of the young guys making big-time plays. You've got Gunner that has been performing at a really high level through you know uh, less than 70 snaps, but that left side's not as worrisome as maybe you thought with such a young guy going in. He's handled his business. Dylan continues to be beyond his years at quarterback. And uh, those are two guys. And then I'm, uh, I'm going to get your take on your expectations for Barney coming into the year and Nebraska's usage of him on, on the sweep, uh, getting him going on the ground, and then they'll no doubt find him uh, over the middle from time to time, but his total yards, I mean, he's really do it all catch and run for this offense. Did you expect that from him or do you say, okay, tip to you, Satin Company, tip of the cap for, for getting this guy as involved as early as they have? I think tip of the cap, like, cause, cause I expected him to be a future part of the offense, but I kind of figured they'd let him come along slowly, but you know, it was like week two or week three and they were like, yeah, we're, we have plays set up for Barney. Like we have like, you know, we have him lining up at every single wide receiver spot. We have plays lined up for him. I think it's a credit to the kid and I think it's a credit to the coaching staff um, to to get him the ball in certain ways just because he's dynamic with the ball in his hands. We, we've, seen, we've all seen it. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I think one thing I underestimated is just how good he was just on, in the, gra- on the ground. Um, you know, just his ability to turn up field and make things happen. You know, we saw that. On Saturday, uh, I think it was that first jet sweep he got where it looked like it was about to be stuffed, and, and he kept going and got a little more. Um, and, uh, you know, I think I like what I've seen from him overall. And I'm excited to see, you know, kind of as his role continues to grow. I, I'll, I'll say something to keep an eye on. They're working that jet motion. They've got all of the guys coming in, and then they run a go off of it, basically, or like a little wheel off of it. They're setting something up, and it'll hit eventually. They tried it with Jalen Lloyd. Early in the year, they're going to hit it eventually because they're running with everybody. We've seen Heinrich do it. We've seen Ja'Cory do it. We've seen Jalen Lloyd do it. And I believe we've also seen Jamal or Isaiah do it as well. The, the versatility that you lay out with, with Barney, Tim, is it's incredible to see from a guy that young. I think the only question that remains with his game is can he long snap? <laughs> Listen, they need somebody. <laughs> how, how does that work with – because? You correct me if I'm wrong, but they've got two scholarship long snappers, don't they? I believe so. I think it's one one on for sure on scholarship. I'm okay. not sure about the other, but yeah, I. But, but there's but there's two on the depth chart. Yes, and 
listen, all the... They the, always say the, if you have two, you don't have any. Right. Well, <laughs> you, you come out of spring to the point where you bring another long snack, snapper and kicker on. Right? They, they've... All right, coming out of spring, you go get a long snapper, you go get a kicker, and it still isn't any better. And I know there's work being done. It's not ping pong and, and foosball during special teams time, but it doesn't look like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah I, I have no idea what it is. And, you know, it, it may just be a case of ever changing pieces and, and just three different people that are like, constantly have to rotate. You know, they're trying to get Alvano up to speed. They're also working with Johnny. He's relatively new. It's a new, you know, like a new snapper. They're rotating snappers. Like, I think it's just it, it, part of it's a case of new people, but part of it's like, hey, man, like this has been an issue beyond this year. Like special teams has not been a bright spot for this program for a while now. And it's like at some point or the other, it's just like, like again, every program seems to have something or another figured out. Like, why is, how is it this bad? I think that's a real issue right now. Uh, and I don't have an answer, you know, like special teams, long snapping, uh, recruiting is not something I've invested a whole lot of time into or, or research into. It's okay. But... <laughs> you don't you don't know it till you need it, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Tim Verghese with us here. And Tim, as we do switch gears here to recruiting and talk some recruiting, you were out seeing uh, Isaiah Mosey on Friday night. I know you also made a stop. I think it was at the Patrick Mahomes Whataburger. Tell us about what you saw on Friday night. We'll start with Mosey. Yeah, really like Mosey. Um, you know, he he got a little banged up in the second half, kind of sat out because of uh, you know the game was in hand. Um, but you know, I, I, I we we said it when he committed. Like his best trait is his elusiveness after the catch, the contact balance, the stuff he does with the ball in his hands. Um, you know, you talk to him after the game, it's like, what does Nebraska see for you in a role? And they talk, they're like, you know, it's kind of in a version of what Jacory Barney's doing as well, like manufacturing touches. Um, you know, uh, Mosey's two inches, two three inches taller. Uh, definitely bigger, um, built like a running back. You look at him run, like he's got a thick lower base, kind of runs like a running back too. Um, I, I'd say something I didn't give him enough credit for previously that after seeing him in person again, I have. And that part of it's his own development over the offseason and part of it is just getting eyes on him once again because the last time I saw him, he was a freshman. Um, but getting eyes on him again, he has such a really deep understanding of just the route tree and depth and just leverage and how to manipulate defenders like his his stop start ability is pretty impressive um he can accel decel like he'll just burst out of a route and then decelerate coming going going in and out of a break to the point that it really throws the defensive back off their timing and he, he creates some natural separation that way just does a really good job of, of of playing those mental games he was pretty consistently open in the routes we saw him run um had two touchdowns it was pretty lights out. I, I I enjoyed watching him. I think he's a guy that's going to have an opportunity to come in here and compete for playing time pretty early. Let's talk about a couple of guys, uh, but uh, Nebraska fans are interested in. You got um, Malcolm Simpson uh, again, kind of showing his commitment to, to the Big Red, and then also a, a guy for a future class, uh, Treshawn Cooper. Touch on both those kids. We've got about a minute here, and we might give you a little overtime. Yeah, uh, talking Simpson, um, I think it's been good. I, I think he's a kid that, um, you know, I think the fan base uh, showing out on social media, is he's, he's, he's a kid that that goes kind of far with. Um, and he's been locked in. You know, I think he's, he's, he's claimed that as well. You know, Texas is showing interest. The opportunity to play in the SEC and stay close to home is certainly intriguing. But they haven't offered yet. And in the meantime, Nebraska has been like, look, we believed in you. We offered you all of that. On the flip side, he's seeing the fan base support. Um, you know, he's planning to go to the Texas-Georgia game, but the read I get on it, it feels like he's just going to go get a front row seat at one of the better games in college football this year rather than, you know, actually going there to explore. Tim, hang tight. We'll we'll get some more thoughts from you on Cooper, and uh, we'll get a, a kind of a final assessment on Nebraska Rutgers. Tim Bergeese continues some overtime with Tim at Tim Bergeese on Twitter. Tail Varsity powered by Cornhead Logger. And now, and now back to Hale Varsity Radio. Some overtime here with Tim Verghese, Hale Varsity, powered by Cornhead Lager. Tim with rivals and inside Nebraska. Tim Verghese on Twitter. So, Tim, we uh, we'll get your your Rutgers thoughts here coming up. But wanted to dive in real quick to uh, you know a kid that Nebraska is looking at and a whole bunch of. Other programs are searching out as well. And 
Give us a lowdown here on Treshawn Cooper. I think we got Tim muted. I'm back. All right, he's back. He's back. <laughs> Bated breath. Um, Treshawn Cooper. Uh, you're talking Cooper, the 2027 tight end from yes. Texas, correct? Yes. yes. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a good athlete, a guy that it's pretty early in that recruitment, but I think with Nebraska specifically, I think what you're going to start to see, they started to do it this summer. I think you're going to see it this season with with like a handful of guys in the 25 class left that really started to turn the page to 2026, but they have their ducks in a row somewhat there. It's just kind of a matter of time with a couple guys and, and actually a good bit of that class already. It kind of feels like a matter of time for a number of 2026 targets, but you can even start to turn the page to 2027 with certain at certain positions and Cooper's one of those guys that really fits what Nebraska's were looking for in terms of like trying to be a positionless offense he can be a wide receiver he could be a tight end you can get the ball to him in a couple of different ways um a di- dynamic weapon I think that he can really feature in the offense can play outside can play inside um early for him I don't think that it's I think it's too soon to call a favorite there yeah I, I think it's you know until he makes it up to Nebraska I, I wouldn't even put Nebraska up there as a contender just yet until they get him on campus, but they've got ties to that area. You know, he's a Dallas uh, DFW kid. Um, they like they like that area a lot. They've got a lot of like legit connections down there. Um, where, where guys down there still remember what Rule did at Baylor. They remember Garrett McGuire. Um, they remember a good bit of that staff, and 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 uh, you know they're seeing the impact of Dallas area and Texas guys on Nebraska's team, and, and that's making an impact. Tim Bergeese with us here. And Tim, as we wind it down, another guy you saw on Friday night, there were some questions in the stream. Kamani Mori backed off his commitment to Oklahoma. Nebraska seems to be in the mix there. What are you hearing from, from Kamani Moore, and where does Nebraska stand there? Uh, yeah, like what I saw from him, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a smaller defensive tackle. He's like 6'1", 288. I think he's probably closer to two, 300 at this point, um, just where he's at. Um, but would fit, you know, kind of a guy that you could bring in pretty early. has a high floor as a as a nose tackle or a one tech or even like a three tech, um, a guy you can kind of line up to 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 eat some space on the interior pretty early on. Um, that Oklahoma commitment was uh, or decommitment. It was, it was it was backing off from a long time. O- Oklahoma, Iowa State had engaged a little bit. Nebraska had engaged a little bit. A couple other schools engaging there. I think Nebraska's kind of in wait and see mode because there's a there's an academic hurdle there. They're trying to. Uh, figure out they're also trying to figure out their own situation we talked about malcolm simpson earlier i think they're just kind of assess how serious of a threat texas is there um you know and 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 whether they would need another guy um i would give iowa state the edge right now over nebraska i think he's going to make that visit before he makes it to nebraska he's going to come out to nebraska for the ucla game though i think that's going to end up being an official potentially if not that visit he may come back for an official later in the year um i think nebraska if they want him can absolutely get him. I just think right now it's shaping up better for Iowa State than Nebraska. But, um, you know, kind of a wait and see thing, I think, with both sides. Um, just one assessing the their own commitment situation, the other one kind of just working through his own situation. Um, you know, and he's also mentioned, you know, Mizzou and Kansas State, two programs he'd like offers from if they were to enter the picture. But, but as of now, I think it's Nebraska and Iowa State at the top. Tim, how does Saturday shake out? Uh, what are your early, early feelings on Nebraska Rutgers? Ooh, I mean, I think I kind of give Nebraska the edge just because I think Nebraska is a more complete team right now, just in terms of of outside of special teams, of course. <laughs> um, but on both sides of the ball, I think they're more, I think they're, they're they're a little more complete. And uh, you know, Rutgers kind of got away with one this last weekend, and I think I think there's spots where Nebraska can can. Um, can get some things going on both sides of the ball. I think the biggest thing, and and what I'm curious to see, this Rutgers team finds ways to win. They kind of do that under Shiano. They find ways to stay in games. They find ways to win. Can Nebraska outlast that? Can they keep uh, Kyle Monaghan in check? I think that's the biggest question for me. Is uh, you know how how well they can be, how well they can defend on the ground against a real real threat. Um, and so I think those are my biggest things I'm looking for. I think I think offensively. Uh, they should be able to have some success, um, both running the ball and and potentially airing it out a little bit too. You get the home environment back on your side. Um, you know, I feel good about Nebraska going in. I really think like Indiana's the game I've got circled coming up. Like as like a like that might be a that might be a loss, but this one I kind of give Nebraska the edge going into it. Tim, we'll check in with you later on in the week. We'll see you Saturday, and appreciate you as always, man. Of course, we'll talk to you soon. There he is, Tim Verghese with him, uh, with us. Uh, find him on Twitter at Tim Verghese. 
And uh, make sure you check him out with InsideNebraskaRivals.com. Always love his thoughts. Uh, Indiana, the old Joe Buck kiss of, uh, of love there with the uh, uh, Signetti T-shirt that looks like a Marlboro package. I've never heard kiss of love before. Isn't that just a kiss? Depends. <laughs> I guess we were talking organized crime. Earlier. Yes. Yeah, See? So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've gone down the old Rutgers rabbit hole. Uh, Great Red Shark checks in, says, remember, it's not where you start, but where you finish. On to Rutgers. That was Great Red Shark's take on Saturday. Uh, we'll get to more of your stream comments. 489-1240-800-825-5865. Colin is in happy Monday, week goes a lot better when the Huskers win. Sexy Grinch here, formerly crew, is in. Brian checks in as well. Uh, Brian still asking me the, the question that's been a pretty frequent question this weekend. Have I found my toaster? Uh, Bill Dolman confiscated the toaster and uh, went into the bathroom after that first half of football. And, uh, yeah. He didn't turn didn't turn the bathtub on, thankfully. He said, no, Bill, water bill's too damn high. Stay away from the water. Do modern toasters still do that? I don't know. You would think with the reputation that they have that, that, that Big Toaster would have gotten that figured out by now. That, big Toaster? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm not, I'm Gregory sure is toasters, in. <laughs> Gregory in all the way from Arkansas. Like it. Uh, Tim checks in as well. Uh, and uh, we'll get to more comments uh, Brian says, please start EJ uh, and uh, the battering ram Dowdell. Uh, that style will not work against Rutgers. And if EJ doesn't start, it should not take two quarters to figure out it's not working. I'm not convinced that Dowdell won't be a good option against Rutgers, actually. And it's- I, you just, and, and Tim said it perfectly, they're just still working on the vision thing. Yeah. Once you get the vision thing down... Uh, I mean, Dowdell's fine, but Emmett is just so so elusive. I like that. What, what I'll say, though, is is Rutgers is not a big defensive backfield havoc team, which is going to stop Dowdell's momentum in the backfield and make him a vision back. It, it can be very much a one-cut, get downhill, mm-hmm. get your five, six yards kind of game. Sure. Pa- power through a guy as opposed to make a man miss in the backfield and I mean, see Emmett's it for the outside. Emmett's averaging eight a carry, right? And he's averaging... Uh, something uh, fierce on first down. It's going well uh, when they run the ball with him on first down. Doc says they, meaning Nebraska, could be 4-4 four and four going into Ohio State. Doc, you're not wrong, man. You've got some ball games ahead. And uh, looking at that schedule, it is going to be uh, coin flips the rest of the year. We'll be here for the ride. Ken is also in... Uh, we'll get uh, some final thoughts this first hour. Coach McBride on the way, Jay Moore as well. It's Hale Varsity, powered by Cornhead Lager. And now. And now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. Good comments in the stream we'll get to. Ken says this team was 2-4 and four at this time last year. Perspective. Rewind. Good comment here. The next six ball games. Again, it's one at a time, truly. It is going to be that way, uh, game to game, week to week. Uh, separate the next six games in a half, uh, even if you go one and two. Each time, Nebraska will have six wins going into Iowa. Basements, six wins, ceiling eight or nine. Rutgers will tell us a lot this weekend. It's a key ball game. We'll hear from Matt Rule in just a moment. Reminder about your friends at Big Brothers and Big Sisters. They empower young people through one-on-one mentoring relationships and they unlock their full potential. Become a big brother, a big sister, or a big couple today. Log on. Visit MentorOmaha.org Excuse me. MentorOmaha.org To get signed up, Big Brothers Big Sisters on a mission to recruit 60 men in 60 days. By October 30th, the calendar flips tomorrow. Get on it. Be a big brother. Be a big sister today. Get matched up. That big and that little. There's a match support specialist. And what you do a couple of times a month, you take that little out to do enjoyable activities. Grab some ice cream. Shoot some hoops. Check out a ball game. Play some video games. Just spend some quality time and Uh, Show them that you care and uh, get a part of it today with Big Brothers and Big Sisters, 60 Men in 60 Days. That's the goal 
uh, by October 30th. Log on. Be a big brother or big sister or big couple today. Mentor Omaha. Dot org. Let's hear from... Quick, quickly, Schmitty, we need to bring up a comment from Ken. Okay. Can, can you bring that up, Justice? Ken has a great comment asking if Dylan can do a drop kick, and he says, if not, let's get Doug Flutie in here for a seminar. Sure, <laughs> and that's a... Wow, Ken, thanks for the uh, the donation of $10. Somehow that, that money that's donated throughout the football year, I have not seen, nor has there been a beer bash at the end of the season, Elijah. Mystery to me. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Elijah's Accounting. So uh, let's hear a little bit here uh, from Matt Rule with player availability. Cut four. Cut four. We'll follow it up with cut five. A little bit uh, of insight with the Mazuka situation. I know that was a comment early in the street. Yeah, Micah was suspended last game. He's reinstituted this week. Um, uh, that was that was kind of middle of the week that that happened, so it wasn't something we were into. You know, I met with you guys. I wasn't anticipating that, to be quite honest with you. Um, uh, Stephon Thompson has a sprained foot and he, he ran well today so we're anticipating him practicing tomorrow so I'll know more about that and then Tommy you know Tommy Tommy went out like the NFL like two hours before the game and worked out and just didn't quite feel like he could go on it you know um, now he ran today and felt as good so I, I would anticipate Tommy having a chance to play this week I think that'll be another probably be quite honest, game time decision. It's, it's all, um, it's all you know. The plantar fascia is all pain threshold, and you know, it's not like can you tough it out. I mean, I've seen guys miss a long time with it. So it's, he's doing everything he can to play. So we'll see. Let's squeeze in cut uh, cut five here. Mizuka into his role right now. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put him. I wouldn't start him. I mean, he would. He was a backup before this happened, right? Like, you know, like when, when, when he came out of the Colorado game, he was, you know, he was, and Toski was put ahead of him. So, um, you know, he's got, I love Micah. I'm working with him to make him the best he can be. You guys, you guys talk a lot about him, but he's a backup player for us. So some clarity there from Rule, and uh, he's not ready to go. That's where he's at right now. Coach McBride checks in hour two. We'll check in with Jay Moore. Hail Varsity on the way. Hour two. We're powered by Cornhead Lager. And now. And now. Back to Hail Varsity Radio. Good to have you back. It's hour two. It's Hail Varsity. We're powered by Cornhead Lager. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal, Justice hanging out as well. We'll dial in with Coach McBride here in a little bit. Jay Moore checks in in uh, just a bit. Our black shirt hour, 489-1240, 489-1240, to get in. Some uh, programming notes as we'll be on the road quite a bit this week. Thursday, going to be down at the Single Barrel, 9th and P. It's a home football weekend, so we get your football weekend kicked off 4-6 to six at the Single Barrel, 9th and P. Friday, Gretna, heard at Sports Bar and Grill. How about a patio show? 4.0, our fourth patio show. We invite you out. Going to be amazing weather. Not as warm as today. So come on out to, to Gretna on Friday. Heard at Sports Bar and Grill off of Highway 370 and uh, Lincoln Road. Get uh, some of their amazing pizza and uh, pour a cold one. Sit back and relax. Back at uh, the Graduate for pregame inside the Graduate at the Single Barrel ahead of Nebraska. Rutgers kickoff is at... Um, 3 o'clock, FS1, so we'll be uh, rocking and rolling. Should be uh, going noon to 2. Noon to 2 uh, at uh, the single barrel ahead of Nebraska and Rutgers. Let's hear a little bit more from Matt Rule while we work on Coach McBride, see if uh, Uncle Charlie can get the phone call. But uh, we heard a little bit there on the Mazuka and some player availability. I really like this comment from... Uh, the head man today, Matt Rule, and uh, specifically uh, the growing part, right? This team is a growing team. That's the word that Coach Rule used uh, after the, the, the ball game on Saturday. We're going to look at cut, I think it is, uh, 14. Cut 14, but Rule kind of expanded on that. And it's not just a, a group of young dudes. It's fifth and sixth-year guys that – 
I mean, they've never been four and one in their career here in Lincoln. More from Matt Rule. Yeah, well, I mean, they're they're growing too because they're 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 in territory they haven't been in before, right? You know, and so you know they haven't they haven't been four and one, right? They haven't how many road, I don't know how many road games they've won, right? They haven't done those things, and so it's this humble confidence to stand your ground, right, and not you know you know be, be confident in the things that you know you're confident about. But also be humble to say, hey, what do we need to improve upon? So, you know, can you come in this week and can you have the same edge to you as you had last week about what do we need to get better at? While at the same time being confident, knowing, hey, I, you know, I, I'm a good player. I have the right to, you know, I've, I've worked hard. And so, you know, a lot of those guys, I think they're all, they're, they're all growing. I don't think it's age as much as it is just, um, you know, hey, what, what, you know, what does this take? What does this require? Like, you know, you watch Purdue and Purdue gives up, you know, he gives up. I don't know how many yards he gave up to Notre Dame, but it was just it was just a bad day, right? And then they give up, you know, three hundred some yards rushing to Oregon State. And I think, you know, I think uh, Sam asked me, I was like, well, we don't really have a running quarterback, and they're not they're not going to your defensive head coach is not going to give up two hundred, three hundred yards rushing three games in a row. He's just not going to do it, right? So they played man and left their guys on an island out there, and so we went out, you know, we we threw the go balls, and you know, so I just think like our guys like learning, like, hey because we're winning a few games now, people are going to do different things against us. And I've got to get to the game. I've got to recognize what's happening in this game. It's not all this emotion beating our chest. Da, 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 da. It's like getting to the game and being like, what are they doing? Oh, oh, hey, this is a cover two game. Hey, this is a this game. Hey, this is a that game. And then them seeing the preparation, you know, um, you know, the things that we're working on and showing up. Like Barrett Lieb and Trent, I, I said this in, on the thing, you know, he had, he had the same play in practice that wasn't very good. We showed it to the whole team. He got in the game, and he, he absolutely took out two guys. Like you guys you guys said, I hadn't seen that yet. So, hey, practice matters, you know, practice matters. And the guy that he hit in practice was Marquise Buford, who's, you know, two ACLs, bad shoulder, bad hit, bad neck, plays in every play. But yet, yet he's out there in, in his black, jer- black shirt um, competing on a Tuesday because that's what we do here. And so I think those older guys, them still being coachable, them still, them still having a lot of uh, – saying things, you know, like even some of the discipline issues that I'm dealing with, you know, with guys on the team. Um, you know, I, I took it, I take those things to like the leadership council. Like, hey, how do you guys think we should handle this? I haven't done that in a long time, but I'm taking it to them because they, it matters, which is, you know, to be, to be quite fair, this is why I really don't want to talk. I don't want to talk about the guys that aren't doing things right. I want to talk about it because I have so many guys who are doing things right. I know you have to ask about them. I trust me, I get your job. You just have, I sometimes you see why, why I'm the way I am. But, um, you know, I just, I'm just blessed to have, to have guys out like Tommy Hills out there battling to play, so battling to get back out there. So that's Matt Rule. Guys uh, putting it all together. We welcome in Mr. Blackshirt, Charlie McBride, a Monday with Charlie. Coach, the uh, Huskers able to, to get it done, get it done in the second half. What would you think of uh, Nebraska's effort on Saturday? I think it was pretty good myself. You know, I... <clears throat> I'll tell you what, it's turning into a little bit of a circus, uh, you know, with with some of the guys that are, uh, it's kind of like the NFL a little bit. You take your best officials and you put them in the best games. Mm, gotcha. And, that's, got a, and it's a little bit like that. I mean. You know, you, you can I, 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 at the offside penalty that you know that they had in the game. You know what it was? Mm. It was the guy's head was over the line. Yeah, it's not his shoe. And everybody's <laughs> got look at his shoe. It's his head. Well, in in a, in a game that close, in a mm. game that kind of game, and you just kind of. I don't, unless it's flagrant, you know, I mean, if it's a flagrant thing, I mean, that's different, Mm -hmm. but your head's always going to be ahead of your feet. Sure. And uh, so it's, it's when you're running, it's, it's different. Charlie, is there a right way to go argue with that ref on the sideline and say, you know what, I think you got it wrong? Is there a right way to do let that? Me, let me show you you got it wrong. <laughs> I'll tell you what I did. I, 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 I I got so mad at a play, and finally they 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 came over, and uh, I asked them. Um, and there was about there was four guys there. And I said, um, what, "What kind of what kind of beer do you guys drink?" <laughs> they looked at me 
they like, and one guy started laughing like heck. And, uh, they, you know, that was the end of it. I mean, you aren't going to get anywhere. I mean, you, you can yell all you want. I mean, now they got the camera, but it used to be worse. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> George Sullivan used to be out on the hash mark. I mean, <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> Yeah. Our, our trainers were all the worst, you know. I guess they were. No, oh God, I don't know what gets into them. Maybe it's their time to scream or something. <laughs> Charlie McBride's with us Monday with Charlie at Tail Varsity Radio. Well, a uh, little bit of honey. I like that, Coach. What kind of beer do you boys like? Um, but it was it was just rough. It was rough for Nebraska. It was rough for Minnesota. For sure, I'm probably missing yeah. another another call somewhere along the way. It was rough in the end zone against Illinois for Nebraska, but you know we aren't going to talk about the first half, Coach, because it it was uh, it, it, it's a game you you've been a part of as a coach where no one's playing well in the first half, and, and then there's there's penalties, but you get through it, and then you you kind of learn something about yourself in the second half, and they go out and score points. The defense played way better. And, you know, think about where this team's at. Spend a second on that. This team's 4-1 and one now, and they were 2-4 and four a year ago. So you've seen some growth. That's what Coach Rule was right. talking about uh, before we, we brought you on. Well, I think that there's a couple of things that have happened. I think there, there's, there's some there's – some, um, the thing that I kind of am getting a feeling of and, and – and, you know, watching and kind of listening to the kids talk. Some of these kids that came in in the pool, uh, there were some problems maybe on the other side of the fence, you know, and uh, sure. they decided that, you know, take a jump. And But, you know, they're always t- they're talking positive. I mean, everything is like the, the guys are all together that, you know, that, you know, that they're in a leadership role and, and things like that. And they're, they're probably the people that had them before maybe or had problems with them. I don't even know if they did. Maybe they didn't. But, uh, you know, they, they just uh, they seem to be looking at it as in, different, in a different way, looking at the way they're po- to play. Mm-hmm. So, you know, those things tell you something that he's getting to, to, into somebody's ear, at least, and, and it's not just talk. You know, sure. it sometimes it's you know it's, it gets you know, just like one of the kids said. You know, it's like you're listening to your your father yell. It goes in one ear and out the other. <laughs> You've been listening to him yell at you so long. But uh, and uh, some kids will be you know are are uh, gone because they're they don't like being yelled at. Sure. Simple. And I think I've mentioned that before. I mean, that's the things you have to find out about your players, and uh, that's why I try to start them early. They're going to get yelled at quick. <laughs> start them, start them early. Then. There's the expectation. How do you feel about Saturday? Rutgers comes in pretty I, I, powerful I, running I, game. Well, you mean the coming up game? Yep, Saturday. Yes. Yeah, they're going to be in the same. They're in the same boat as a, a lot of schools. Are. They're trying to, you know, build their program and and make it strong. And I think it's going to be a matter of discipline. Mm. I think it's going to be a matter of us being disciplined. If we're disciplined, we'll win. Mm. You know, for really, you know, if we get some. Get a, we could get a couple turnovers to make it a little pretty. You know, but. Mm. I think that guys play, you know, right and hard, no no penalties for really no procedure, and you know, and sometimes you get it so loud you have to go no count. Right. And when you go no count, and the guy's still offside, I mean, no count means look at the ball. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, don't go anywhere till it's snapped. And uh, so, you know, that's what – when a guy's in, have an angle, illegal procedure penalty, when that happens, uh, you know, and it's no penalty, when it's no uh, signal, you know, snap count, then then I worry a little bit about, about that person. But uh, I think that they're getting to a point where – uh, they can they can pop from any place. Mm. They can score. I mean, 
uh, they, they're getting the reputation of uh, being that kind of a football team. I think you know, I, I remember even the Purdue guy mentioned today that you know one thing about them they 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 can score from anywhere, mm-hmm. and so that that may be right, and we'll find out though in the future. But I think our kids are getting more more disciplined, more together, and each week is a, is they're getting better. Mm-hmm. Charlie, the, the one place where there hasn't been noted improvement has been field goal kicking. We've spent a lot of time talking about that on the show today. I want to get your thoughts on on coaching in a football game, not being able to trust your field goal, how it changes things. Well, the thing about field goal kicking is not only that you – I think you saw that this week. That's a good example because people don't the, – the snap – when there's three guys together, right, any one of those three guys can make a mistake – and probably the two that are the first, the center and the and the holder, maybe. But it's always the kicker misses because, you know, he's no good. Mm. Well, it may be the guy had a snap that went well when you saw on television. It was high. He had to put it down. He had to, and that throws the whole kicker off. They're all messed up. And in pro ball, boy, and I'm telling you, that is it, the center and the, they're like gold. They work mm-hmm. together. And that's that's where you try to get it. And in college or even in high school, you, the time element in there is 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 hard. And uh, so you need to get a guy that can really snap the ball and a guy that's gonna not going to drop it and – not just because he plays quarterback, you're going to put him there in the holders. All the holders are quarterbacks, you know, and that kind of thing. you got to find the best person available, and it's usually a receiver, but um, that that's kind of where it is. I think, I, I think we've got some pretty good kids that can kick. Yeah. I wouldn't say they're the best or whatever it is, but I think, I, you know, we're, we're improving. And uh, we had some trouble last week, and – Probably that's the thing that will solve a lot of problems. Well, see if Nebraska can get it done and stop Rutgers and Chiado and a uh, talented back guy is averaging about 105 a, a game and 25 carries. We'll do a little, uh, little bar fight, a little phone booth football <laughs> well, on Saturday. Coach, we'll give you a shout next Monday and, and get your thoughts on Nebraska Rutgers. How's that sound? Good, 125 or 50 yards is a kiss of death at our place. Yeah, <laughs> and I, yeah, we, and our, I, it's not a good idea to, for anybody to report that because it, it it gives you a little incentive. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> well, it's out there now. <laughs> Thurman Thomas, Ricky Williams, Barry Sandy. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate you, coach. <laughs> I'll talk to you next week. There he is, Mr. Blackshirt, Charlie McBride of Monday with Charlie. Good to get his thoughts and love his observation there about, you know, the team together. You hear Coach Rule talking about it quite a bit with uh, fellas that are upperclassmen being coachable. You hope that's the case. It isn't always the case. More of your comments coming up. Trevor says it's going to be a good ball game on Saturday. Totally agree with you there. Should be pretty tight. We want to see you out at the single barrel before uh, kickoff on Saturday. Uh, Bullock playing high level. BU Bulldog says the highest PFF grade of any Nebraska defender ever. Pretty awesome. What's Jay Moore think? He's next. All-State, two-year starter, and rush in for the big run, an NFL vet. Is Dudeness or uh, Duder or uh, you know, El Duderino, if you're not into the whole brevity thing. It's Blackshirt Jay Moore with Hale Varsity Radio. Back into it at Hale Varsity. We're powered by Cornhead Lager, Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal. We say hi to Blackshirt Husker NFLer Jay Moore. And uh, Jay, you are road tripping out to uh, one of our favorite spots, Gothenburg. A little bit of a free shout out for one of our favorite courses. But uh, you've got the... Uh, you just want to get a tea time, don't you? Uh, well, I'm working on it. <laughs> I'd really like to play well enough to get a tea time with Jay Moore. Jay, how is the weekend? How are you, How are we doing? You're going to be uh, in, a, in a beautiful part of the great state of Nebraska. 
yeah, no, it's a, it's definitely a favorite place to go. And I've been out there for um, a couple of years. I don't, don't know why I just haven't made it out there, but yeah, uh, in route to Gothenburg and uh, getting ready for a USGA four ball qualifier out there tomorrow morning. So uh, need to, hopefully we can find some magic again, like we did last year. Uh, I was able to qualify for this event last year. Um, so like I said, yeah, heading out there and, uh, but it was weekend was good. Got to win. And uh, on to Rutgers, I guess. On to Rutgers, for sure. That first half was rough for a lot. But Matt Rule was in in teaching slash coaching mode at halftime. In his words, prophetic, you know, exactly what you need. Jay, you've been in those moments where it's just a, a tough game in the first half. And it can go one of two ways. You can grow from it, which is what Rule saw, or you can crumble, and too many times Nebraska fans says, pass the whiskey, please. The team crumbles after letting a bad team hang around. Yeah, it's, it's it was a very obviously sloppy, awkward, you know, no flow, tons of penalties, uh, obviously numerous missed opportunities by – the offense to score points. I mean, they like easily could have been a, you know, 13, 16, nothing a half. Uh, but of the teams, is, it was an issue. The penalties, I know the offense PI was maybe one of the worst calls I've seen in, in history of, of football. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I see what, you know, that, that side judge is on there on the Purdue sideline. So I'm sure he's, he was getting an earful from, from Walters all game. And, and then finally threw a flag and, um, but you know, that's, we got to move on from that one, but that was a bad one, but that, you know, a, a call like that changes the momentum of the game. Nebraska gets that touchdown on fourth down that, I, that severely changes the outcome of that first half. Purdue keeps momentum. Uh, you know, they block a couple field goals. Uh, obviously the operation times and the field goals, you know, was, was sloppy and, and mishandled, but they are able to, you know, dodge some body blows. Uh, Nebraska was still able to move the football um, in between the 20s. Slows down a little bit in the red zone, which that's a bit of an issue. But you know, they're not the only team in the country that slows down uh, when they get the red zone. The field condenses. Um, but obviously, a lot of a lot of missed opportunities. But you you go to, you go to halftime and you're just like, oh man, how can we get this thing headed in the right direction? How can we you know a game that early in the year and and you thought Nebraska obviously was the better team but only being 10 point favorites you just you just been in that situation too many times as Nebraska fans that says hey Nebraska should be winning they shot themselves in the foot penalties special teams issues they're keeping a bad team around and then obviously you come out in the second half and they they get up three points but really after that uh it was all it was all Nebraska so what I take away from you know a game like this is even when it's been sloppy, there's been some issues, Nebraska's found a way to keep battling and to win this football game. And as, you know, if, if there's been a knock so far through the first three games um, or four games with uh, with Coach Rule this year, is they struggled in the second half. Well, this is, you know, obviously completely flipped. Uh, this team found a way to, to win, got some offense going, got some stops, continued to – cost turnovers score you know points on defense still take care of the football on offense uh in the second half which now granted we've been up big going into halftime for a few games uh so we can kind of not necessarily take your foot off the pedal but kind of just back off a little bit and, and control the game but this is where we came out and for as for as poor as the first half was the second half was just completely opposite and um, that's how you grow and that's how you build and that's how you improve and Obviously, there's still a lot to grow and build on, but that was a game. I think we can all agree. Two years ago, three years ago, Nebraska loses. You know, you leave West Lafayette shaking your head, like, how the hell did that happen when you're a much better team? But uh, they went in there, took care of business, and, uh, you know, there's still lots to improve on and, and grow from. And uh, then, you know, they're at practice, you know, meetings right now, learning from all the mistakes they made and how to improve on them. So, you don't get beat by Rutgers because that's a good football team coming here on Saturday. Jay Moore with us here, Hale Varsity Radio. His thoughts, Purdue and Nebraska on Saturday. And Jay, when it's all said and done this year, I think Purdue might go down as one of the worst teams in the Big Ten. 
and you really struggled with him through the first half. You kind of laid that out, but then you turn things around. I'll be curious to see if we get to see Matt Rule's halftime speech to the team during Chasing 3 to see if that flipped anything. You, you figured it out in the second half, and I think you, you said it perfectly, where two, three years ago, that's probably a game you lose. You find a way to really lose the momentum in the second half, and you maybe have outplayed them, but you look up at the scoreboard and it's 10 nothing or 14 nothing in the third quarter, and now you're fighting an uphill battle. We didn't see that on Saturday. Well, with that in mind, you talk about the step forward. Do you have more positives or more t- negatives to take away from this game when you consider the games that Nebraska is coming up? Rutgers, Indiana, Ohio State, all on the horizon. Are you more concerned based on what you saw in the first half or more encouraged based on what you saw in the second half? No, I think I'm, I'm definitely more encouraged. So I think, like I said, they get that – that, Offensive pass interference does not get called. Like I'm telling you, what that changes. That changes a lot. That just the college football is so momentum based that you you score on fourth down and you go up seven nothing, and your defense really had been playing and did play well for for four quarters. Um, I tell you what, just changes just changes things. It changes how Purdue handles themselves, how they view things. So um, no, I, I definitely take uh, this performance as as a positive, because I think in years past, I mean, when Nebraska's played well in the first half, they've always struggled in the second. And I think we finally, when you were, you didn't get some calls, you missed three field goals, a couple of those blocks easily could have been returned for touchdowns, but she did a hell of a job getting the, the guy with the ball down. Um, and this is just, you just, you grow from it. And as fans uh, in, in media, wherever you, you want to kind of lump us into the same category, is we just, it's just got to be a game by game situation for this team. We tend to just always look forward. What's coming up? How are they going to handle Rutgers? How are they going to handle Indiana? How are they going to handle Indiana State or Indiana or Ohio State? It doesn't matter. I think every game is going to have their own wrinkles, their own issues, different obviously game plans. They're going to handle them differently. But I look at this one as okay, we had some opportunities, we didn't grasp them. We came out in the second half. We controlled the game. We made plays when we needed to. The offense got going. Defense stepped up. Looked to clean up the mistakes they had for the last couple of weeks. Looked to kind of get that figured out against a good running football team, the Maccabi, and, and what they like to do offensively. So I take that. And now it's just, okay, that's the Purdue game was the Purdue game. Sloppy first half, dominant second half. We've, we've, we've learned from that. Let's go on to Rutgers. And it's just Rutgers. I don't care about Indiana. I don't care about Ohio State. I don't care about USC. I don't care about UCLA. It's all about Rutgers now and what they do. Um, and they play a clean. Uh, they play a clean ball. All three phases are very, very clean. Very, very uh, disciplined. They're physical. They tend to not beat themselves. Uh, so, like I said, it's just on to Rutgers now, and um, I feel much better. Um, I, like I said, this is a this is a glass half full moment for this football team, and. Um, I'm, I'm definitely encouraged by how they, you know, respond in the second half. Jay Moore's with us. Big Red Wrap Up is where you watch him at Jay Moore 44 on Twitter. He is off to uh, Gothenburg uh, to, to qualify for USGA, which is awesome. Jay, I want to nitpick for a second at this point in the year, and it's not always like a light switch where it's on or it's off. But tackling and Nebraska, some of the older guys, the vets, seem to have problems, at least in the first half, with tackling and then that first drive as well. Why is that? Because I we, we know that Rule and this team practice, they practice hard, they practice tackling. What is it where just some games, a team that's been just nails historically under Tony White – has problems tackling. Uh, can you put a? Can you answer the why to that? Yeah, it's hard. I mean, tackling it's 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 tough. I mean, and again, it's you can tackle. You know, you can practice tackling, form tackling. Let's be honest; they're not doing a ton of live tackling. You know, in practice during the middle of the week, you got to take care of your players um, and and make sure they're fresh and as well. But uh, it's just. Listen, Maccabi is was a tough runner, uh, physical runner, uh, kind of has a weird style. And it's just you just it's just it's, I don't know. It's, I don't. I, I wish I had a, a better answer because I've been there where you know, on defenses where 
uh, you make every tackle, and I've been there as well, where I've missed plenty of tackles and I, you, that you've made before. Um, and it's just can be a, a, a technique thing. Uh, it could be how you, you know, uh, a footwork thing, which is probably, probably technique, uh, how your, where your eyes are, and how they're looking at things. So it's just there's there's a lot that goes into it, but mainly it, it just comes down to being in the right position, right in being in control, having your feet underneath you, um, eyes up, you know, being square. A lot of times, guys, it might look like they should have made the tackle, but you know they're they get crossed up or the feet are bad or the pad level's too high or you know they don't get their head across. That's a huge thing of tackling is you just can't shoulder tackle these guys in the Big Ten. I mean, you got to get your head across, get your body across, and to stop the momentum and it's kind of all of the above but i think what helps will help nebraska going forward is always being in the right position it seemed to be in better position the run defense was much improved after illinois so again it just it's all about being under control you know don't panic don't think you need to lay the guy out and if you can just hold on for dear life whatever you can <laughs> grab a leg grab an arm grab a grab a shoulder whatever you can i know it's hard you know can't horse collar you know tackle there's uh there's different rules now but just you just hold on for dear life and hopefully the other guy can come in and and wrap him up and that third guy can come in and obviously strip him and like bullock did and against illinois game right that's this textbook team tackling right there this is going to be a game by game basis obviously you want to be clean obviously you want it to be you know miss tackles i tell you what (laughs) talent's too good in the big 10 you're gonna have guys that miss tackles uh guys that you know just guys they have scholarship players too Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, the talent's too good in the Big Ten. You just, you just hope that your missed tackles are, are few and far in between, and uh, more tackles for loss. You know, more, more. Uh, you know, team tackling, just violent physical defense. But yeah, there's this, there's just, there's, there's a multiple reasons, right? Um, that tackling can be an issue, and uh, usually it's just guys just out of control, not in the right spot. And now. And now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. Jay Moore's with us, Hale Varsity Radio, Black Shirt Monday, Black Shirt Husker, Ed F. Heller. Jay Moore with us at jmore44 on Twitter, where you follow. And catch him with Big Red Wrap-Up Tuesdays on Nebraska Public Media. Jay uh, co-hosting that. So, Jay, on to, to Rutgers. Rutgers been living a charmed life where they escaped Blacksburg with a two-point win after dominating and then hanging on for dear life. They uh, Washington left about 17 points on the field and missed a kick at the buzzer on Friday night. Rutgers is fast and physical, but uh, they're not the 85 Bears. How do you feel about Saturday? Yeah, um, I, Rutgers is one that I just w- always kind of scared me. Um, it's they're so easy to overlook, and we know how tough they are. We've we've gone up there and played, and it's been physical. We've had them come here, and um, they're just tough-minded, uh, physical teams. Uh, their head coach just kind of embodies that. You know the toughness. Um, hard edge. He's a defensive minded guy. Uh, so you usually have outstanding, you know, defenses and, you know, they play all three phases fairly well. And I watched most of that Washington game. I mean, they get the blocked field goal return for a touchdown and then a Washington player, you know, I don't know what he's doing, runs on the field and they get an extra man on the field and it just wipes that whole play out. So um, they got away with it, right? You said it already that they, they've kind of snuck away with a, a couple wins. But that's what the good teams do. They find they find ways to win, um, and take 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 advantage of opportunities that are presented to them. And that's what they've done so far this year. But it's gonna be tight. It's gonna be close. Um, you know, I don't like that for Nebraska. Obviously, when you have kicking game issues, you can't uh, you can't get a snap. You can't get a hold. The timing's off in the field goals. Uh, these in these Big Ten games, as we know, points are a premium. Uh, but I still feel like Nebraska just how they played in that second half. And I said momentum is key in college football. They can kind of carry that momentum from the second half into this Rutgers game. But I think it's going to be close. Uh, I know the line six and a half, seven as of right now. Uh, we'll see how it kind of finishes up. But to me, this kind of seems like a fourth quarter battle where 
Rutgers gets the ball with a chance to win it. Uh, you know, they get not to score a touchdown, but I think our defense steps up big and it makes the necessary plays when it needs to. You know, a 21-17 type ball game is kind of where I see fit for this for this uh, type of game. I, I have a hard time saying it's going to be like uh, 18 or, or 17 or, you know, we're going to get uh, 24 because I don't know if we can kick a field goal if it's mm. not an extra point. So um, just seems like a 21-17, maybe a, a 20-28-24 20, uh, type of ball game where our defense has got to stop and step up big uh, against this Rutgers offense. And a quarterback who Nebraska has been is very uh, familiar with from his time at Minnesota before this. So um, it's going to be close. I think it's going to be close, tough battle, physical battle where uh, special teams are going to matter. And I don't know if that it sets up well for Nebraska, but somehow they find a way to get it done. Jay, how thin are the margins going to be if you lose the special teams battle? Because you talk about how buttoned up Rutgers is in all three phases. That's a Shiano coach team. Yep. We've seen Nebraska in special teams. I think you can put down the early forecast. Nebraska probably not going to win the day on special teams. How thin does that make the margins in terms of the, I guess, the margin of error on Saturday? Yeah, it, no, it makes it very thin. Um, like I said, points are a premium, being able to flip the field, the punting game. The punting game has been okay this year, but she's done a pretty good job. Uh, coverage units have been okay at times, but it's really getting the momentum, making sure that when you get the ball in the red zone, yeah, you're not going to, you'd like to score every time down there and get touchdowns, but that's just not going to be the case in the Big Ten. You get good defenses, but at least getting three, right? But we know how hard that's been this year. And, um, and that might not be the case on Saturday. You know, we might see, uh, you know, we might go for it more on, you know, than we have to on fourth down, unfortunately. Uh, but it's going to be thin. Uh, they've, you've seen, I mean, they've had field goals blocked, obviously, but they've blocked field goals. And, and uh, you know, their special teams have been good. So I think that's just, that's where it's, you know, you want to talk about the hidden yardage. You want to talk about kind of how Big Ten games are, are won a loss. It's usually in that third phase of, of special teams. Obviously, that doesn't bode well for Nebraska because of the field goal issues, but I still think this offense is is dynamic. Um, they're, they're defensive, you know, they're our, our wide receivers. We're going to have to get off against some of their man coverage. Uh, that's if we if, if our offense has struggled any, at any time, just getting off man coverage, just our bigger body guys being able to separate. But I think they're going to pressure Dylan early and often. Um, and our defense, just continue to do your thing, right? What you, what you did well last week, continue to get better and to shore up that run game and, and get off the field and create turnovers. Keep creating turnovers offensively. Uh, keep the ball. We've been doing uh, no knock on wood so far. That's been – I don't know if that's been talked about enough. It's about how it's been obviously vastly different than, than last year. Got to keep up with that, keep up those tendencies, and uh, we'll just kind of see where the chips fall. But unfortunately, if it comes down to Nebraska making a field goal, uh, I, don't, I, don't feel, <laughs> I don't feel too confident – in that, I'm, I'm not sure uh, a lot of people in this state feel really confident either. Jay, about a minute, we'll get you out. Appreciate it. Jay Moore with us, Hale Varsity Radio. Momentum in the running back room has been key. It'll be huge for Nebraska to be good uh, against Rutgers running the ball. What do you think of Emmett Johnson's spark in the second half? Do you see more of that moving forward? Yeah, I think so. We've kind of, it's kind of been who's the hot hand. You know, we've seen Dowdell's kind of the hammer. Um, you know, we had that short yardage touchdown run on fourth down and we need some tough yards and get it. But I think what Emmett does is, and even Ramirez to uh, a, a certain aspect is, you know, fighting for those tough yards, but also the vision and, and but be, being able to catch the ball in the backfield in the screen game. Obviously, Ramirez had that touchdown called back. Uh, on fourth and one in the first half, but Emmett was ran it so well in the second half. Had good feel, good vision. Uh, had a great screen pass on a second second long or third long. And him getting a face mask after I think Rule got the 15 yard penalty too for checking his headset. So I, I, he is uh, he's evolving, man, and I think he's kind of the the man now that can do all three phases. Um, that's always a, a struggle with run, young running backs. I know he played a lot last year's. You know, you got to be able to run in, between, run in between tackles, have vision, catch the ball in the backfield, but also blitz pick up. Um, so he's done a good good job, except for maybe that last play against Illinois in overtime. But I think you got to stick with him. He's a hot hand. I thought Ramir would be 
kind of that guy this year to do all three th- all three phases, like I just mentioned. But Emmett's he's evolved into the guy now, and the feel that he has and the vision, to, the, the the ability to bounce it, the, ba- the uh, you know the, the ability to stick a foot in the ground and, and get vertical and then catch the ball in the backfield is uh, it's been fun to watch. And I think uh, you'll see him. You know, he's earned he's earned a lot of carries and a lot more playing time. So uh, I'm sure you'll see a lot more of him on Saturday. Jay Moore's with us. Jay Bird, safe trip, and we'll check in again soon. Thanks for the time. Yep. You got it, boys. We'll talk to you next week. That's good to get thoughts from Jay Moore. Zach checks in and says, uh, uh, you have uh, EH gets mad respect for teaching. Looks like he really cares a ton. Somewhat offsets the bad takes, but still love the guy. <laughs> love you guys. Zach. I own the bad takes. It's okay. It's what makes me me. But you don't have that many bad takes. I don't eh, think. Eh. I've, I've been known. I've you been talked known me finisher. out of Central Florida laying the 14. I talked you out of Bama as well. <laughs> well, you know, I was trying to shine the light positively. <laughs> and now. And now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. One final time on a Monday, make sure you stream the show and like and subscribe. Hail Varsity YouTube, Hail Varsity Radio, Twitter at HVarsity Radio. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal, Justice Rohde is uh, driving the bus. Appreciate him uh, sitting in again. And uh, not quite sure if there's a leather whip back there that Elijah has, but Elijah's teaching and technique are... I hate to go there, Schmitty, but you make this sound way too much like a ditty party. No, I, I, am, I am not. <laughs> oh, we need to leave that joke in last week. See, we really do, but, but you but set me up. Each, the stream is quite good and creative at, at working ditty references into said stream. And I think we are commandeered to maybe provide one ditty update a, a week. Well, the update today, no whips and chains in here for me. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Justice, though, is doing a fantastic job today. He's from, For those listening at home, not listening or not watching the stream, he's been running most of the show today and mm-hmm. doing a pretty fantastic job. So, hat tip, Justice, you've been doing well in here. Well well played, sir. Well played. 489-1240, if you are trying to get in, big thanks to Jay Moore, thanks to Charlie McBride, and a big thanks to Tim Verghese. If you missed any part, want to re-catch the show or jump on the treadmill, Take us with on your time. Do so. Uh, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play. Like and subscribe to Hail Varsity Radio. Ratings, we love them. Good, bad, or ugly. We'll take the feedback. Trevor checked in. Uh, Dion's been in uh, throughout the stream. Appreciate you, Dion. Uh, Michael says, uh, Ty hit the quarterback and Bullock's interception. No mention of this. We're talking turnovers in the stream. And, uh, yeah, Nebraska's tackling was much better in the second half. Reminder to buckle up. Use your seatbelt. It saves lives. It prevents injury only if properly worn. Buckle up. Listen to it. Click this message from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Tad, let's squeeze you in. Tad, thanks for listening and calling. Go ahead. Yeah, you bet, guys. Hey, listen, um, I've been thinking about this, but I really think that uh, – we are missing the boat here with uh, Harburg, and I'm just saying this is probably not going to sit well with a lot of people that I think were a more dimensioned uh, football team when we can run the football too by the quarterback and pass it, and he's gotten a lot better. But I'm just saying we ought to take a look at that. It's, well, I uh, think, Ted, it, they were going to try and use it, and then there was a false start by your sixth year starting tackle and then it's time to go on the adventure known as field goal kicking so i think they'll they'll look at harburg more i think they should i think dylan's done a hell of a job so i don't think you take him off the field but they got to figure out the run game and it looked like in the second half they did with emmett and and what else what i'll say is to go back to what we heard from damon last week is i think they need to utilize harburg slightly differently less as a wildcat quarterback and more as a quarterback I, i like the way they're getting him onto the field but you need to have a, a way to have him behind center at the quarterback position without the defense knowing, well, this is guaranteed going to be a run coming our well, way. Look at, look at the Wildcat and what it did to, uh, to Penn State, or I should say to Illinois' defense yeah. Saturday. So. I mean, if that maybe would have been sprinkled in sooner, but Dylan put up 24 points as well, enough to win the ballgame. Tad, 
we'll see what happens moving forward with uh, with Harburg against Rutgers on Saturday. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a uh, it's a it's a, you, um, a it's a weapon. Thanks a lot. See you, bud. Yeah, Take care, Ted. Appreciate hearing him. Appreciate all of you checking us out, uh, radio, stream, YouTube, wherever. Back tomorrow, Brandon Kenny, our favorite wideout, going to be in. Michael Brunts, Mitch Sherman. We'll talk at four with Hale Varsity, powered by Cornhead Logger. Thanks.